All right. So, okay. Is this the refresh Toyota Innova? Huh. So what's new? Still looks the same to me. Anyway, kidding aside guys, when the refresh Hilux and Fortuner made it to our shores last year, it was only a matter of time before the refresh Toyota Innova also came here as well. Well, the long wait is over because here it is. This is the 2021 Toyota Innova E, and in this video, we get to see what changes were made from the previous model. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome back to another car review. If you're new to my channel, I hope you hit that subscribe button and become part of the Reagan Strides Army. If you're my subscriber already, thank you so much for your support by watching this video. I also hope that you give it a like. Also special thanks to Toyota Valenzuela for giving us this awesome opportunity to feature the refreshed Toyota Innova E. If you have any questions for any of the Toyota lineup, you may head on down here to Toyota Valenzuela and check them out. Or you may also contact the person in my description below. Now, Toyota made some changes in the Innova lineup for this refresh model, with the biggest change being the removal of all gasoline variants in the country. That's right, all Innovas from here on will be motivated by a diesel engine. Now, that's not the only thing that was removed. You see, the Sport Touring variant also makes an exit this 2021, which means that this Innova E diesel that I have here is now the mid-spec Innova in the country. This Innova e diesel manual transmission retails for 1,285,000 Philippine pesos, which is a slight increase from the outgoing model. Now, it's good that they added some features and benefits in this refresh variant that will help justify that added cost. Now, while the Fortuner LTD got a significant change in the looks department, this refresh Innova took on the evolutionary approach rather than revolutionary. This Innova E still gets the same headlight housing along with the same halogen headlight units. The front grille gets a refresh though. This is more of a trapezoidal shape now rather than the hexagonal shape that we found in the outgoing model. You also got some nice black uniform grille slats here and the thicker borders here for the front grille reminds me more of the refreshed Toyota Hilux. The front bumper also gets a redesign with a separate turn signal housing here and you have halogen fog lights here at the bottom. Now there are also some nice sharp angles and lines here in the front bumper and the bumper protrudes a little bit more to give this refresh Innova a more aggressive look. Now the side profile of the Innova is exactly the same as the previous model. Now this tells me that this is more of a mild update rather than a significant refresh that we saw in the Fortuner LTD and the Hilux Conquest. We do get a different design wheels though. These wheels are pretty similar to the Toyota Rush. The wheels are 16 inches though and these are wrapped in 205-65 R16 tires. The tire size is the same, the wheel size is the same, the braking system also remains the same. We have ventilated disc brakes up front and rear drum brakes at the back. The suspension setup is also the same as the previous model. We have a double wishbone setup up front and a multi-link coil spring rear suspension at the back. Of course, as expected, the ground clearance also remains the same at 178 millimeters from the ground. Now the rear end of the refresh Innova gets zero updates. We get the same design here, even down to the same regular bulb taillights that are found in the Innova. Now when you pop open the manual liftgate here, you'll see that the cargo space is also the same as the previous generation. We still get the same cumbersome third row seats here that fold to the sides instead of folding flat to the floor. This is still the same as the previous model and also the same as the Toyota Fortuner. Now with the third row in use, you get 300 liters of cargo capacity which expands to 758 liters if you fold the third row seats to the side. Now that 758 liters is good enough for how many pieces of medium-sized luggage? Let's find out. It's good enough for three medium-sized luggage here at the back. 
Honestly, guys, I feel that this is, a, this is a replay of my 2020 Toyota Innova review video. If you haven't seen that, you could click the link above because there's really no changes here at the back. Anyway, let's go over to the engine to see if there are any changes made in this refresh Innova. Now, if you're expecting to see a 201 horsepower diesel monster engine that we found in the Hilux Conquest, or the Fortuner LTD, well, prepare to be grossly disappointed. What we have here is still the same engine that can be found in the previous generation Innova. This is a 2.8 liter turbo diesel engine that churns out 167 horses and 343 newton meters of torque. Now, the power is slightly lower because this is the manual transmission variant. So sorry guys, no 500 newton meter monster can be found under this hood. Now, if you want a bit more power than what this manual transmission Innova can give, you can always opt for the more powerful automatic transmission variants. All right, now when you step inside the cockpit of the Toyota Innova E, you'll see that it's an all new cockpit if you've never been inside an Innova. <laughs> but if you've been inside the previous generation, you'll see that it's exactly the same layout as the outgoing model. Well, not really exactly, guys, because we do get black fabric seats here instead of the dark brown fabric seats that we got from the previous model. Ha! <laughs> you thought you're going to get leather seats now, huh? Not a chance, buddy. You won't even get a leather steering wheel here because this Innova E only has a urethane steering wheel with the usual hands-free buttons here for, well, hands-free connectivity. You also don't get cruise control. That's probably going to happen in your dreams. Not really there, guys. But the good thing here is the steering wheel adjusts for tilt and it also adjusts for telescoping. So that's a bit of good news if you're a taller driver and you're looking to find the perfect driving position. Now, when you look at the gauges here, the gauges are still the same analog gauge cluster here with a tiny little uh, LCD display there that shows you some vital stats and the resolution of that LCD display is straight out from Atari in the 1980s. Thankfully, guys, the infotainment system of this Innova E is upgraded though. You get a slightly larger 6.75 inch touchscreen LED display here that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We still don't get a reverse camera though, so that's a bit of a bummer. You'll have to go up to the higher variants of the Innova in order to get that nicety. Now, we also have a manual climate control system here. Some buttons for uh, your drive modes. You have an eco mode and a power mode, and you also have a button for turning off traction control. Unfortunately, guys, I noticed that there's no USB charging port here. You do get a 12 volt power charging outlet here and well a single usb port on the head unit which also acts as your connector for your apple carplay and android auto so that's the only place where you could charge your usb the well devices we have our manual transmission here a, a manual handbrake and of course a lone cup holder here which we've already subjected to our clean canteen test in our previous uh, innova review video and it passed with flying colors we also have a center armrest here which is also made of plastic and it's pretty much the same as the entire uh, well cabin materials that's been used here inside the innova e's uh, cockpit this is still a signature toyota hard plastics all around which if you look at it guys it's still a piece of good news because this these are durable plastics and it will really outlast even maybe the lifetime of the owner of this Innova E. So yeah, layout of the cockpit, it's all the same. That's a bit of good news, especially for those people who had uh, pre-facelift uh, Innovas. Well, they really wouldn't feel too bad after all. Now, since the cockpit area of this refresh Innova didn't really get much changes, well, we can't really expect much changes as well here in the second row as well as the third row. Just like the pre facelift model, the space here in the second row is a pretty good. You could fit uh, three average size Asian adults here, no problemo, guys. And the good thing here is the safety of the Innovas are also quite good. It's not as stellar as the higher variants, but the safety features for this Innova E 
is also pretty decent. This gets uh, dual airbags while the driver also gets a knee airbag and you also have uh, ABS with EBD, you've got traction control, stability control, and hill start assist as standard. In fact, that's pretty much standard for the entire range. If you want more airbags, well, you'd have to go up to the higher variants. Now for toys, it's also the same as the pre-facelift model. We've got a separate aircon system here at the roof, and we also have a 12 volt power outlet down there at the bottom part, and a couple of map pockets at the back of the seats. So yeah, I won't go into the third row anymore, guys. I've already done that in my previous uh, 2020 Toyota Innova car review. So you can just watch that if you wanna see what's what happening at the third row. But for now, I still want to take this refresh Innova out for a quick spin. So let's go for that drive right now. All right, guys, so we're now driving the Toyota Innova E, the refresh Innova E. However, since this practically has the same mechanicals as the pre-facelift model, well, you could expect that the drive will be pretty similar, which means that you have the same nice and hefty steering feel here, and you also have that nice torquey engine that could deliver maximum torque immediately at 1,200 RPM. However, this is the first time that I'm driving the manual transmission Toyota Innova, so let's spend a little time to talk more about this manual transmission. Now, while going around the Toyota Valenzuela complex, well, I could only just take it up to as much as second gear. But what I noticed though is the clutch is quite light and it's also not that tall. So that means that, well, the transmission, the gears would bite immediately upon letting off a bit on the clutch foot. I also noticed that shifting from first gear to the second gear, it's also quite smooth. I love that because I would expect that normally manual transmission uh, models, especially for MPVs like the Toyota Innova, would have a more cumbersome and a bit clunky transmission or gearbox, but that's not the case here. However, this is the five-speed manual transmission and not the, well, the higher or the better six-speed manual transmission that can be found, let's say, in the base model Toyota Fortuner. That's not really a big issue though because, well, five speeds is still pretty decent. I guess the main reason why Toyota never really changed any of the mechanicals in this refresh uh, Toyota Innova E is, well, they found the perfect formula already when it comes to these uh, MPV workhorses. You've got a strong and sturdy build coupled with a nice torquey diesel engine and a super reliable uh, transmission. Well, it's really no surprise to see that, uh, you know, Toyota never really changed anything in this refresh Innova. Why change anything when it's already perfect in what it does, right? The facelifted Innova has not changed much because it seems that Toyota has found the perfect formula when it comes to durability. True, there are other MPVs in the local market that offer more tech and amenities, but then more tech and amenities also means more items that could possibly break down in the future. Now, this would compromise on the durability and reliability of the vehicle. At the end of the day, for the Toyota Innova, what matters the most is that it has the ability to deliver reliable performance every single day. Thanks for watching.